Hi guys. It is a chilly night here in the end times. It's starting to feel like winter approaching here. About time here. Halfway through October. It is now Sunday night, October 17th, 2021. And uh, as while looking for my doomsday sermon over uh, that Collapse Chronicles today, I stumbled across this long essay uh, from good old Rolling Stone magazine, which ob for obvious reasons did not make it to Collapse Chronicles. This is actually about a year old. I'm not sure how this one slipped through my radar. Uh, from good old Rolling Stone magazine from this fellow named Stephen Roderick called Loving the Alien, How UFO Culture Took Over America. And uh, it's a great graphic. You know, like the like Rolling Stone used to have these graphics. Classic Rolling Stone graphics. So anyway, As I've mentioned many times, it's probably a good thing that uh, YouTube did not exist about 25 years ago when this whole UFO space alien thing was uh, the focus of my life, that I was a lot deeper down this rabbit hole than I have ever been uh, down in the doomosphere by far. It dominated my life, as I've mentioned many times, usually to a roll of the eyes. I was a, quote, UFO abductee for 22 years of my life. I, I, uh, <laughs> I know a little bit more about the subject of uh, space aliens and UFO abduction and then people who have not been abducted by space aliens for 22 years. But anyway, we're not going to dredge all of that up. Uh, this is a long, involved piece. Uh, it took me over an hour to read this excellent thing. And if you are just someone uh, just with a lukewarm interest in what the buzz is about UFOs and space aliens. You know, you're not on you're not on either side of the fence. I think this fellow, I've already forgot his name, Stephen Roderick, does an excellent job. He doesn't take cheap shots at uh, you know UFO buffs and alien abductees and all the rest of the gang. He doesn't take cheap shots. But he does, he, he, you know, just he, he, he plays a good balance. Uh, and so I highly recommend, I'm going to put the link here. And it's an entertaining hour, hour and a half uh, read for anybody just wanting a peek in to the UFO culture. And he, uh, you know, I'm just going to read one little section. Uh, he talks a whole lot about Area 51. I've told you about my own trip to Area 51 a few years ago, which was pretty weird, although it had nothing to do with UFOs or space aliens. Talks a whole lot about this fellow Bob Lazar, L-A-Z-A-R. If you do not know the Bob Lazar story, uh, I am on the fence about Bob Lazar. I have to admit, uh, again, if what Bob Lazar says is true, uh, like so many of these other things, if what Joe Blow says about UFOs and space aliens and all of that is true, it is quite possibly the second biggest story on planet Earth today. Of course, if what Bob Lazar and all of these other people uh, say about UFOs and space aliens is not true, 
then it's a bunch of total whack jobs. Again, I do not think, uh, I do not discredit this story. Uh, after dealing with this and going down this rabbit hole for years, it's, uh, it quite possibly is the second biggest story in the history of humanity. I do not think it is 100% bullshit. I think it is 99% bullshit. 99% of this crap uh, out there on the internet uh, talking about UFOs and space aliens, take it from a UFO abductee, it's crap. It's unadulterated horseshit. But anyway, so this is <clears throat> the main reason that this channel is not down the uh, UFO rabbit hole and uh, so this fellow, why can't I remember this guy's name? Once again, Stephen Roderick uh, who is not down in the rabbit hole but he certainly touches on the main reason that I am no longer down in the rabbit hole. Uh, as much as Dulcinea and other UFO buffs wish I would get back down the rabbit hole, this is the reason that I and so many other people with brains uh, who treat this subject seriously are no longer want to hear this crap. Uh, okay, so we're going to pick up about a third of the way through. This is one of the chapters. <clears throat> I'm just going to read this one chapter, put the link on, and you can take it from here. It's true. Everyone in the UF world is fucking nuts. Actually, that is not quite right. Everyone in the UF world believes everyone else in the UFO, UFO world is fucking nuts. You know, it's my way or the highway. It's like, it, it, it's like the UFO rabbit hole is, is like everybody is Guy McPherson. You know, it's my way or the highway. Either you believe my theories on these or you are a clueless moron. It's my way or the Skyway. And this is uh, w one of the many things that I, I finally just got sick of. Uh, everyone in the UFO world believes everyone else in the UFO world is fucking nuts. Think of ufology like the various sects of Christiana Christianity. They all believe in the same deity, but the Catholics are always blasting the Baptists, who are always blasting the Episcopalians. Solidarity is not a word spoken here. You can be confident that no matter what I write, many UFO people will declare it bullshit and me possibly a CIA plant. I am quite sure if I had a UFO channel that it w within one week I would be declared a CIA counter intel pro spreading New World Order uh, disinformation propaganda about space aliens. Uh, it's just, it's, it's never ending. We begin at the beginning. This is a brief history of the UFO culture in America, according to Rolling Stone magazine. <clears throat> we begin at the beginning. Some people think UFOs have been with us since the Old Testament. I am one of those. Okay? I am one of the people who thinks that UFOs have been with us since the Old Testament. In Ezekiel, the prophet describes a flying chariot that is supposedly powered by wheels turned by four angels. Then the prophet sees God and describes, describes him, it, her, not unlike, well, an alien. Quote, I saw that from what appeared to be his waist up, he looked like gl glowing metal as if full on fire and that from there down he looked like fire and brilliant light 
surrounded him, close quote. Not a God guy? Agnostics argue that the birth of civilization in ancient Samaria could never have made the jump to an alphabet without the helping tentacles of higher life. If that's your bag, there's a History Channel show for you. Okay, for if anybody cares, I do not believe for one minute that the birth of civilization in ancient Sumeria had jack shit to do with UFOs or space aliens. Unadulterated horseshit. Okay, let's see. Walking hand in hand through history with the possibility of UFOs has been the UFO fraud. Yes, the UFO fraud, probably the most common character uh, in the UFO culture. A lot of people, probably the man listening to me right now, when I sit here and say I was abducted by space aliens for 22 years, this man back here is probably rolling his eyes thinking, I don't know what that lunatic I live with is talking about. I wish he would get his ass to Florida. Anyway, <clears throat> where were we? Walking hand in hand through history with the possibility of UFOs has been the UFO fraud. In the 19th century, the Book of Dizan, <laughs> I've actually heard this story. It, it is a funny story. The, the Book of Dizan was discovered in Tibet and included the story of an alien race that settled in India, tried to make friends, and when that went bad, disappeared into space, but not before blinding everyone and poisoning the air. The book created quite the buzz in Europe. Unfortunately, researchers eventually determined the delightfully named, and this is for real, Madame Helena Patrovina Blavatsky, a European mystic, had actually written the ancient text in the year 1890. The duping of believers has been the movement's central theme, but exemplified, best exemplified by Orson Welles' War of the Worlds, a radio play purporting a Martian invasion that had listeners skedaddling for the hills. This is actually, I guess to this day, taught in journalism school. Uh, we were, you know, we were taught this when, you know, talking about the dangers of, uh, of, of fake news that, you know, Orson, this, this was on April Fools, that it, this was an obvious joke, this story that Orson Welles just came up with on April Fools. Uh, anybody listening to this, I'm pretty sure people committed suicide. Uh, if I remember the story correctly, but uh, in the the War of the Worlds lesson for journalism. Anyway, <clears throat> the UFO turned into a true phenomenon in the 1940s and post-war era. During the war, all sides reported what came to be called Foo Fighters. Anybody sticking their toe into ufology has heard of the famous Foo Fighters. Flashes of red following air squadrons and moving at super speed. Everyone assumed it was the other side's new terrible weapon, but it wasn't. And the sightings were never explained. To this day, they have never explained uh, the Foo Fighters, uh, that, that both sides were reporting, uh, these UFOs following uh, airplanes in World War II. Uh, after the war, the game was afoot. In 1947, here we go, an aircraft crashed 30 miles away from Roswell Army Airfield in New Mexico. The military initially said it was a flying saucer, 
before changing its story and arguing that it was, in fact, an experimental weather balloon, but many did not buy it, starting 75 years of speculation that it was an alien craft. Again, uh, you better believe after being down this rabbit hole for as many years as I was, I don't know. I am on the fence. I am leaning towards the alien craft uh, theory. I never saw the damn thing. Uh, there are some very reputable sources with excellent source credibility uh, claiming this thing was clearly uh, an, an alien craft. Again, if they are telling the truth, then they're telling the truth. All right. Moving on from Roswell. <clears throat> Uh, the desert became a center for UFO activity. See, a lot of this is talking about Area 51. Uh, so, uh, the desert became a center for UFO activity. This seemed weird since the Southwest was usually just a place to get through on your way to California. Perhaps not coincidentally, in the 1950s, filmmaker Jack Arnold was setting cheap, popular horror films like It Came from Outer Space in the Wastelands, turning the desert from dull to a what-the-fuck wonderland. <laughs> the movement has waxed and waned over the past 50 years. Stories of men and women being abducted by aliens became an essential subgenre. Back in the 1960s, Congress held hearings and the Air Force formed special task forces to study and then dismiss sightings. They were called, and all of this is true, they were called Project Sign, Project Grudge, and Project Blue Book. And yes, Project Blue Book has its very own History Channel show. Then came Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind and E.T., a book called Chariots of the Gods, arguing that aliens had been visiting Earth since the beginning of civilization, sold 67 million copies despite being debunked by historians. Again, uh, Chariots of the Gods is, is obviously one of the Bibles of ufology. Uh, I don't know where they, I don't know this claim, despite being debunked by historians, I, as I recall, he had like a hundred different examples. Again, uh, I am on the fence. My guess is some of the book uh, had some basis in truth, and a lot of it was just uh, taking that kernel of truth and just blasting off into outer space with it. I do not uh, throw out the entire bathwater. I'm trying not to throw out the baby with the bathwater of that book and all these other books. Um... Uh, so, uh, it, I'm, I'm just going to break in here since he doesn't mention it. Uh, I, you know, I read every one of these books, it, it, every, pretty much every single book published about UFOs and space aliens that was written between the year, well, 1960 and the year 2000. I read every one of these books. Uh, if I had to recommend some of the books that uh, I think should be required reading. The Day After Roswell by uh, Philip J. Corso is uh, a, an excellent, uh, I, I, would, I would read that one. And if you're into this abduction stuff, 
uh, it would be my my number one uh, recommendation is abducted by Harvard professor John Mack. Uh, if you really want to, uh, it's the best study of alien abductees. Now the follow-up to that book, I'm getting off track here as I tend to do here, uh, the follow-up to that book uh, that nobody has ever heard of called Passport to the Cosmos uh, is is also required reading. You need to read Abducted first. What I really appreciated about Passport to the Cosmos, what it talks about a recurring theme in that is that a lot of these alleged alien abductees, whatever was happening to them, that they ended up later in life, you can read this book uh, for yourself, uh, they ended up you know, these were people with, uh, you, you know, quote, real careers like real estate agents and journalists and whatever. You know, people with normal jobs uh, trying to survive in normie society, dealing with whatever was going on with them. And they ended up leaving normie society and dedicating their lives in one facet or another, they ended up dumping their normie lives and uh, starting to preach about the end times, the collapse of a planet. You see this over and over. I read this book when I was a real estate agent. And I remember reading this and saying, I wonder if I am ever going to quit my $100,000 a year job to get out there and start warning uh, the planet that uh, the planet is collapsing, we are in the end times, and we are fucked. I don't have any idea if 22 years of uh, coaching by space aliens uh, led me to Humpty Dumpty Tribe or not. Anyway, let's get back to Rolling Stone here. Okay, you know, talking about close encounters of the third kind and E.T. and chariots of the gods. Uh, UFOs were now mainstreaming. The 90s brought us the X-Files, and on it went. <clears throat> I didn't pay much attention. Not my thing. Then, toward the end of 2017, something changed. I read in the New York Times about Commander David Sex Fravor's experiences. I don't know why he calls the... I don't understand the thing about the sex. Anyway, Commander David Fravor's experiences. Fravor was the commanding officer of VFA-41, and F... A-18F Super Hornet Squadron based on the USS Nimitz. You've probably heard this story. In November of 2004, the Nimitz was conducting training exercises off the Southern California coast. The guided missile cruiser USS Princeton accompanied the Nimitz. One afternoon, the Princeton's radar began picking up unknown blips. One pilot took off and had a look. He saw nothing except a giant water spout not unlike what you might see if a ship had capsized in the ocean. Later, Fravor launched off the Nimitz and almost immediately began seeing white blips on his radar and then had a visual sighting of something moving toward his plane. Another plane recorded footage of the speeding blip that was shaped like a tic-tac mint. The tic-tac moved up and down, side to side at supersonic speeds. No plane flew like that. The Princeton nervously asked Fravor if he had live missiles on his jet. He did not. Later, Fravor remarked, quote, I don't think the technology was developed here 
And by here, I mean this planet, close quote. <clears throat> Navy folks were folks I knew and trusted. My dad was a Navy pilot. He had flown off, he had flown off the Nimitz. I'd written a book about Navy pilots. They are trained aerial observers, unlike most UFO witnesses, and have zero to gain by, connect, by concocting tall tales. I began asking around. A Navy buddy with 20 years of carrier flying, including tours over Afghanistan, told me about a time that he and his co-pilot saw an unexplained speeding light on a flight. They looked at each other and never reported it. Close quote. It's a small community. You don't want to be seen as the nut who saw aliens, my friend tells me. Fravor's experience confirmed this. According to a government memo, aviators, quote, detailed the high level of ridicule that the air crew experienced, close quote, after reporting their in-air experiences. Other pilots played the X-Files theme whenever they entered the room. Maybe that is why video of Fravor's flight and two other missions that encountered UAPs, they're now UFOs are now called UAPs, uh, were ignored until they were declassified in 2017. They were released to the public amid great fanfare and the revelations that the Pentagon had spent $22 million investigating US UAPs. Multiple podcasts followed. How did I know that this was a serious development? The History Channel commissioned another show. The April 2020 official, official release of the videos brought another round of press. So I headed to the desert, and then to San Diego, Las Vegas, and other places I am not permitted to mention. I talked to a rock star about clandestine Pentagon meetings. I took some hallucinogens under California stars. I nearly had all my clothes snatched at a Barstow laundromat. That last incident was so weird that I am not prepared to go into details. Now, I know more, but understand less. And that is the main warning about the UFO space alien rabbit hole. You can get sucked down this rabbit hole. You're going to have so, you're going to be buried so deep in unadulterated horse shit. Uh, that, that it's, but it, but it gets your mind, hey, if it gets your mind out of the damn cesspool of the doomosphere, uh, you know, what was Dulcinea rattling on about in one of her videos uh, last night, something about mantids, you, you know, and screen memories, I'm thinking, oh God, here she goes down the mantid screen memory, uh, <laughs> rabbit hole. You will have all the uh, the mantids, the screen memories, the good God almighty guys. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, the, the most sensible in, in, in 22 years down that rabbit hole, I think the most sensible folks I ever met were the fucking space aliens themselves. Okay. But anyway, uh, I have a sick little dog. My, I made the big mistake of giving my little dog, uh, he wanted some chicken fat. And the little dog had some chicken fat, my little space alien dog. So I have to go take care of my, my sick little dog. 
Sancho Panza, are you having a bad night? You say, Bob. Bob may do not feel good. All of this crazy talk about space aliens is making me crazy. I just want to go to sleep and dream about chippies. And don't be feeding me any damn chicken fat anymore like that. Bye, guys.